What is up, fellas? I will have a little bit more videos creating a team on Madden NFL 07. Don't worry, bud. I did not forget about that. I'm also going to have NBA Live 09 come in. Um, I just realized that those two videos are by far like, like 4,000 views. No, I'm just kidding. It's like 2,000. But it feels like it. Um, so that's going to be coming in. My dog had eaten it. I'm just staring at him right now. He had eaten it half a year ago. Yes, that's right, you chunky fuck. And, um, yeah, I lazily allowed that to not get the game yet again. But now we're going to look at the rosters. This is 3-0 and teams, the Packers and the Falcons going up against each other. Pretty good uh, Packers team. Of course, a decent Falcons team. Um, if we can get past some of these struggles and stuff like that, um, it'll be very, very interesting to uh, see how all this pans out. Because overall, uh, this Falcons team does look pretty good. They got Julius Peppers and John Ab uh, Abraham on the same side, and they got a, a nice game manager at this point. Teach Barber is all right at this. Yeah, it gets a little bit better. Speaking of Madden and Fellow Seven, gets better around then. But still, I'm looking at it. But last night, Titans or sorry, Monday night, Titans get a win against the Bills. You should have bet that shit because uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, by you know by far you're going to see the Bills get to five and one at that point. I think Tennessee was at home looking for a nice statement game and uh, pretty much got that vibe once you saw uh, Derrick Henry just show off that he might be the top speed running back in all of football. Just not fair. You get to do that size with that top speed. Just not fair. And you see um, pretty good game by Stephen Diggs, but uh, Josh Allen's just been sharing the ball around. So for overall, this team's built pretty damn well. For them. That's an 87 overall second year player, so you know for sure he's going to be a damn good draft pick for this Packers team. Um, Sunday night football, uh, Seahawks just, uh, that just seems like a terrible game to watch for Sunday night football. Maybe, of course, more interesting uh, had Russell Wilson been um, playing for the Seahawks, but just it's just not good, man. Just not good. Um, as, uh, just a boring game. Alex Collins ends up having a pretty damn good game. It's, the dude's always been a good runner. He's a great runner at Arkansas and stuff like that. Um, come in a couple times in the past for the Seahawks and had good games and had a pretty good half season with the Baltimore Ravens. But again, Baltimore Ravens set up a lot of running backs to have good seasons. So I digress. Um, looking at a couple of the afternoon games, Dallas Cowboys. That line was moving towards the Patriots, and you know the Dallas Cowboys have huge, huge fan support, and you know a lot of money is going to go that way, so I felt maybe betting the spread, and then you get, you know, New England, even at three and a half. Um, New England looked like they got very close to winning that game. Um, Dak ended up having to do his part now, um, that they're not ahead like that, but they still cover the spread with a nice touchdown pass to C.D. Lamb with a nice little taunt after he gets decked in the end zone, but it doesn't matter how hard he gets hit. On that play, he's not injured, and he falls into the end zone. It's a touchdown. It wins the game for you. Dallas is now 6-0 against the spread to start the year off 5-1 and as a football team. Pretty uh, pretty damn impressive, I'd have to say. Another afternoon game, though, impressive, is the only undefeated team left in the pros in the NFL, Arizona Cardinals. Two things, I think the Cardinals uh, are going to be the top offense this season. Just seems like there's just too many dudes in that offense, you know, John Connor's there to run pretty much between the tackles and to help you bruise your way into the end zone when you're inside the 5 and the 10-yard lines. I think Chase Edmonds a nice change of pace back. Both of them can catch the football. I think Chase Edmonds a little bit more athletic, though, to be able to do so. So with that being said, just those two. Then you got A.J. Green, who, you know, not A.J. Green of old, but A.J. Green, you know, of new. A.J. Green of new with... Probably his best offensive coordinator easily ever. Um, so a dude's been has a great offensive mind in Cliff Kingsbury, and he's got an excellent quarterback in um, Kyler Murray, and he's got just a bunch of manlets just running around. Rondell Moore, Christian Kirk. It just seems there's like three more I don't don't even recognize. But you got the big dudes and AJ Green. And DeAndre Hopkins getting things done. So, uh, yeah, it looks good for that team. 
I think that offense just, you know, the defense is playing well. J.J. Watt's just making a couple of pressure plays in that game against the Browns. And it just sucks because, you know, the injuries to the Browns so far at running back, it really seems like Baker Mayfield's not going to be with the Browns next season. And um, it's very interesting to me because – if Baker Mayfield is not going to be with the Browns, who's going to go to Cleveland? Because that's a Super Bowl roster if you have Aaron Rodgers sent to it. And uh, pretty much um, they're not getting things done themselves with Baker Mayfield. Mind you, he's been injured. But the dudes played like shit. Like te- I, To me, it just seems like that offense is so boring, yet they're winning games, but at the same time. like When it finally comes to it, you lose to the Chiefs. You lose to this Cardinals team, and you just get just absolutely just shit on by the Cardinals. I mean, shit on by the Cardinals, only scoring 14 points. Mind you, you're going to have it just how many times are you going to let this defense that's actually pretty good itself has shown a little bit of uh, vulnerabilities in the passing game when you, they can't get to you. Um, so really, though, just things aren't looking good for Baker Mayfield's uh, career heading in pretty much, if you ask me, uh, heading into an extension. So I don't really anticipate him being with the Browns next season. Um, You had the, uh, no, I already had the Tampa Bay Bucks already playing their game and stuff. But Buccaneers handled the Eagles, so that's easy peasy. We go to London for Miami Dolphins. A couple sketchy just plays by Tua that just don't make sense when it comes to him throwing the football. But he still goes for 300-plus yards. Again, it's Jacksonville, so come on. I mean, are we really shocked here? Come on, folks. Like, we shouldn't be sitting here thinking anything of that. Because, really, though, just the matchup's just super easy. So, again, I don't know. But they still lose to Jacksonville. So that's the bad thing. Like, right, it's like how bad he was still through. Good stat line when it comes to yards. And stuff, but it's just not looking good for Miami. It's looking good for Indianapolis and Tennessee lately, though, because I think Indianapolis and Tennessee are going to face each other come soon, I believe. Yeah, in the next three or four weeks. Terrible kicking so far by our man. It should be 16 to 0. But taking a look at it, it's just, it's just not looking good um, for the Dolphins whatsoever. Um, the Colts just looking badass on defense. And that offensive line, I mean, once they get Quentin Nelson back, how do you not expect uh, Jonathan Taylor to have just an excellent second half of the season, especially in that division? I know Tennessee's 4-2 and two now, so you officially have a team that's kind of weeding themselves away from everybody else. But overall, it just really seems that there's a good chance the Colts could try to pry their way back into that division overall. It's just that team looks too good overall, um, especially just – their offensive line still getting a decent amount of push, and Jonathan Taylor is showing himself off as being a big play player. Looks good. Taking a gander at uh, Kansas City ends up handling Washington after uh, Ricky Seals-Jones has a nice little touchdown catch. More of a blown coverage, but overall, Kansas City did look like they were struggling, but Daryl Williams just stepping in. Again, just that's what I think about that running back position and the running back talent that they have is just he steps in. Pretty much has himself the equivalent of what Clyde Edwards Hilaire could do himself. And I think that's just just going to help this team overall. It's uh, Maybe it's something you can say negative about their running back play. But overall, that offense works very, very well. And uh, they didn't really skip a beat. They looked a little... Patrick Mahomes made just that one blunder that just didn't make any fucking sense. But it is what it is. Nice win overall in the second half. More so the fourth quarter to close things out, 31-13 to for the Chiefs. And then you had the Raiders come in and finally get themselves a little bit better offense going. Denver looks at safety. I mean, this Denver team's getting kind of blown up now in like the you know middle to deep passing areas. It just, this team wasn't built that way to, to eat up that many yards and give up that many yards when it comes to... Uh, through the air, man, it's just you're starting to get a little bit of uh, starting to get some bad play calling or something like that. Because Denver's defense doesn't look nearly as well as it did. Mind you, it was against lesser talent in the, some of these teams. 
in the early part of the year when they started off, what, 3 now? So it's a loss to Denver in that one. Raiders back to now 4-2 and two for this team. Uh, that was the other afternoon game. And then you had uh, the Chargers and Ravens. How could I forget that one? That was supposed to be a game that I felt like, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, Chargers are a playoff team, but maybe we can start talking about Lamar Jackson and his Ravens actually look like a legit Super Bowl contending team. They're going to go up against Cincinnati this week, so it'll be interesting to see uh, just how well Cincinnati can play against Baltimore. I do expect Baltimore to be able to run the ball quite well against them. I think that'll have to be the game that if Joe Burrow's going to do something surprisingly out of nowhere or Jamar Chase and stuff, it's going to have to be that week compared to like a Detroit week. But uh, again, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Divisional game between those two. Rams get shit done against the Giants. Giants look terrible. They're also beat up. But again, just uh, just... Just that Rams offense just looking like you can't really stop it. Just looks like you can't really stop it, and that's how good the Cardinals were when they played each other and how how good they have been. Just really does not look like you can do much against it, and the Giants just look like, like dog shit. And speaking of dog shit, Falcons 31-0 to against this team. Again, it's just a young uh, quarterback against us. Threw a couple picks and a nice game by Mark Bolger. As always, fellas, take it easy. And have a good one.